Hey YouTube, what's up? Mike the Manic Geek here, and I'm coming at you with another review today. Now, what I have on hand here is a product from a company called Final Mouse. Now, as pretentious as that name might sound, the goal of this company is to sort of set the standard for what gaming mice should be and make a product that you can truly classify as the final mouse that you will ever need to purchase for your gaming needs. Um, does this product live up to that promise? Well, let's get into the box, see what this product's all about, and um, I'll give you a little summation of my thoughts at the end. So the name of the game here is Understated Performance, with really the only contents of the packaging being the mouse itself and a little description card explaining DPI settings and where you can go to get help. The aesthetic of the mouse is very simple and understated, with flat black plastic along the surface and gloss plastics along the side. All switches on this mouse are Japanese Omron switches with a 0.2 millisecond response time, some of the fastest switches in the industry. On the left side of the mouse we have a little indentation for your thumb to rest and the two thumb buttons which do have their own individual housings, so no sticky clicks here. The cable is generously long for this mouse and should provide for easy routing in whatever desktop environment you use. It is lightweight and durable and has some lovely black braiding throughout the length of the cable. Now, probably the most interesting feature of this mouse is the Pixar 3310 sensor that they use for it. It has a custom firmware and a custom 500Hz polling rate for maximum stability and maximum accuracy with your mouse movements. Now last but not least, this does have white LED lighting, it is non-adjustable and is always on, but is not distracting from the proceedings at hand, which in this case is pro quality gaming. Alright, so there's your basic rundown of this mouse. Now, as deceptive as its appearance may be, there's actually a lot going on under the hood with this product as we've seen in the, in the basic breakdown. Now, when they designed this product, they designed it in partnership with, um, with several members of the, of the professional gaming community, um, both within first-person shooters and uh, MOBA titles uh, specifically. Um, so they got a lot of feedback with regard to the actual weight of the product, the way it feels in your hand, uh, the way the switches feel to actuate, what features you really do and don't need, when you're dealing with a professional gaming environment. Now that's, that's a very critical term with this product, is professional gamer. When, when you're engaged in professional gaming, you want a product that is going to deliver a very bare bones, no nonsense experience, that's going to be as accurate as you can possibly make it, as comfortable as you can possibly make it, and give you just enough of that competitive edge that you're going to perform consistently well in every game. Now, that being said, there are certain aspects of this mouse that I personally was actually not very happy with. Um, primary of which is this glossy plastic that's all along the sides of the mouse. Um, while I really couldn't catch it in the camera, uh, right here up front where the cable actually meets the mouse, um, there's a couple of imperfections where the plastic was, um, I guess, heat molded together at, the, at, this, uh, at these corners right here. Um, that's not really the biggest deal in the world. Um, really, that's just uh, some, sort of something that I happen to notice. And really, most users are never going to pay attention to that anyway because it's the part of the mouse that's facing away from them. And it doesn't appear as though the body is compromised there. Um, it's just a slight warping. Um, but it's the gloss plastic itself that's problematic. When I, when I used this mouse for the past week or so, um, I noticed that as I would start to really get into my gaming experience, um, this glossy plastic would start to make my hands feel like they were unnecessarily grimy and it had me wanting to reposition my grip to sort of get rid of that. But there's not a whole lot of space here to do it even if that was an acceptable option in the first place. Um, I don't know, maybe that's, ju maybe that's just me. Um, 
but I can't be the only person out there that experiences sweaty palm syndrome when they're gaming. And because I dominantly use more of a claw style grip or like a hybridized, um, or rather, um, I'm sorry, palm grip rather than the sort of hybridized like half palm, half claw grip or full claw grip when I'm, when I'm gaming, um, that's problematic for me. Um, problem number two, um, DPI adjustment. It's just a single DPI switch. Now, granted, when you turn the computer on and off or unplug the mouse and move it to a different peripher uh, different uh, device, the internal memory of the mouse does retain the DPI setting that you that you set in the first place. But if I want to go back to a slower DPI setting, I have to first cycle through the other DPI settings that are in front of it. And because there's also no indication of what DPI setting you're actually on, it, it gets kind of it got kind of frustrating for me because I wound up having to go back to the start 400 DPI, then move back up to 800 and then to 1600 where I found this mouse to be the most comfortably usable. The adjustment range, it seems to be multiplicative in that it doubles the previous DPI number. So 400 DPI, 800, 1600, 3200 DPI. I would have liked to see regular intervals of DPI adjustment, um, maybe, maybe to the tune of 400 DPI. So 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2400, or um, I'm sorry, uh, 20, uh, yeah, 2000, 2400, 2800, 3200. Uh, just to give people just that little bit more adjustability, mind you, fully granular adjustability like what you would see with a um, with something like the Razer Naga Hex, which I which was really my first gaming mouse that I ever purchased. That sort of fine tuned adjustment really isn't overly necessary because really you want to do most of your adjustments for the mouse in your in-game settings to begin with. Now, moving away from that, probably the second biggest gripe that I had about this mouse next to the plastic was these thumb buttons. These thumb buttons are horrible. Um, now, that being said, th there's a little bit of a caveat there. When discussing the thumb buttons in the design of this product, um, Final Mouse got sort of mixed feedback from the gaming community at large. Um, it was sort of split down the middle. Either no one cared about thumb buttons, they very rarely used them to begin with, or it was another side of the argument where it's just like, are they there? Do they work? There wasn't really a whole lot discussed otherwise. Now, my experience with these thumb buttons. Out of the box, they were ridiculously stiff. Like, stiff to the point that they weren't worth pressing. Actually, I had to sit here for a little bit and work the thumb buttons in individually until they until they sort of broke in a little bit. Now, that that's that inherently is not a problem. But even now that they've softened up a bit to the point that they're a bit easier to depress, um, because they still require a decent amount of effort to press, and because the mouse is so light, and because I have this gloss plastic on the side affecting my grip, I feel like the entire mouse shifts when I click the thumb buttons, and I'm the type of gamer that uses my thumb buttons. I use them very heavily, um, be it League of Legends, Elder Scrolls Online, Diablo 3, Borderlands, whatever game I'm playing, those thumb buttons are critically important. So the fact that I have a hard time using them in some games is a little problematic for me. Now, the other thing that I found a little off with this with the thumb buttons in particular, was their shape. Now, to be fair, Final Mouse has not committed to having this be the standard shape for their thumb buttons, and they are considering other design uh, implementations for them moving forward. Um, but my personal opinion on them is that because they have this sort of um, triangular prism shape to them, I found that moving back and forth between the thumb buttons um, was irritating my thumb, and that made me even less likely to want to use them. And despite the fact that there is this lovely uh, thumb rest area in here, which ergonomically feels 
lovely, by the way. I found that if I wanted to use the thumb buttons, I had to almost exclusively rest my thumb on top of the buttons, which was a bit of a problem. Now, that stuff aside, everything else about this mouse is butter. These left and right clicks are the nicest left and right click actuation that I have ever felt on any mouse in my entire life. And between myself, my fiance, and all of my friends that do any sort of PC gaming, none of the, of the mice that they have used have compared to the actuation force on these. These are absolutely perfect. Um, the reaction for them is swift and precise. I don't have to exert a lot of force to press them, which was what made this whole thing a little disconcerted when talking about these excessively stiff thumb buttons. Um, the scroll wheel is incredibly precise. Uh, it registers every every little uh, indentation on on the scroll wheel accurately and smoothly every single time. The rubber coating on it feels really nice in the hand to use. Um, it doesn't feel flimsy at all. Um, there isn't a whole lot of distracting LED um, light bleed through on it, uh, especially during uh, lighter times of the day like right now. It's about midday in Florida. Um, I really appreciate that. I love the flat black plastic that they used for the main palm portion of the mouse. If they could have utilized a similar material on the sides of the mouse, I, I would have been able to ignore the thumb buttons entirely, honestly, and probably switch to this as a dedicated daily driver. Um, but the real, the real joy with this product, for me, was the sensor. This sensor and its unique implementation is probably the single most accurate sensor I have ever experienced. It, this sensor behaves like, like a go-kart. You turn that wheel, and that is exactly the direction that that go-kart is going to go. Only in this instance, there's no losing traction and oversteering and slamming into a wall or blowing up in a fiery explosion. This mouse is just, you move the mouse in a certain direction that is exactly where your cursor goes on the screen. There's no having to second guess where your movements are going. Um, the Teflon feet on the bottom are also part of that experience. This mouse glides smooth as silk. And I highly recommend using a speed surface for a mouse like this to really get the most out of that smooth action. And detune the DPI settings on the mouse to, to go in conjunction with it um, and then adjust mouse settings within the game to really get maximum uh, enjoyment out of this product. So, is this the final mouse? Absolutely not. This is definitely not the final mouse. But, as a young company, they're already very much on the right track to setting that gaming mouse benchmark that frankly a lot of the other peripheral manufacturers out there really should be taking notice of. Um, particularly when it comes to mouse clicks and the millisecond response time that it takes for those clicks to register for your machine, um, sensor implementation, and the ergonomic feel of the product. Um, even going from something like my actual daily driver mouse, which is the Phoenix Nasita, um, which has a much wider body, slightly heavier uh, weight to it, and uh, a bit stiffer left and right clicks, this almost had me. And that's kind, of that's kind of impressive in my book, because I pretty much fell head over heels with the Phoenix Nasita when that came out. But Final Mouse has definitely been an eye-opener for me and it's definitely a product that you should keep on your radar and if something like the glossy plastic doesn't bother you and if you're not really much for thumb buttons and you just want that premier pro gaming mouse experience i would definitely check out final mouse um, i actually have a link down in the description below bringing you guys to the amazon page where this is for sale uh, it's currently 67 dollars and change uh, comes with a three-year warranty. Um, if there's ever anything wrong with the product at all, even if it gets shipped to you with a couple little almost imperceptible scrapes over the thumb button plastic, um, they will 
they'll, they'll take care of you. Um, their customer service team is top notch. Their engineers are constantly working with gaming pros around the world to attempt to make this the actual final mouse that you would ever need. And I am sort of tempted to believe that they will actually achieve that. Um, but let me know in the comments down below. Um, leave some feedback for Final Mouse as well. What did you guys think of this product? Have any of you used this yet? And um, what are some design changes that you would want to suggest for Final Mouse to incorporate into this product? Uh, I'd love to hear back from you guys on it. Um, but anyway, uh, looks like my time here is up. So this has been Mike the Manic Geek coming to you with my review of the Final Mouse 2015. Take it easy, guys.